put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Grand Theft Auto, The Ballad of Gay Tony, Game Review. You play as Lewis, the Latino ex-con bodyguard slash business partner slash platonic friend slash guy who does the doom dirty work of Gay Tony. Not Stark, although there is a certain resemblance. And he owns several nightclubs, but he has become, become something of a junkie, and the business suffers. And he has loaned money from some of the wrong people. And, yeah, basically you have to clean it up. And the two of them have a real old married couple kind of thing going on with, you know, yeah, arguing, bickering, and such. Now, the... There, there are a number of characters who do not pronounce Lewis's name correctly, and it will sometimes be intentional. And Lewis is willing to kill, but he doesn't want to. And the story starts during the bank heist, where Lewis contributes absolutely nothing. It's basically just to place it in the timeline of the others, I, I think. Yeah. And the there, there's a lot of clever dialogue in this. And along the way, you may just be double-crossed or swap sides. And the, the, the basic plot is you work for these bad people to erase the debt. The email function really fleshes out the background and there are ongoing mission, you know, yeah, several missions in a row will deal with the same overall story, such as, once again, the stolen diamonds and such. It's already been pointed out that the story is kind of meh and cliche. The... I will again like with the first DLC and the main game, Grand Theft Auto 4, I will start by going into the multiplayer because it is easily the best element of the overall game. It takes place in the same city as the single player and... Yeah, I, sh I should also right off the bat say that I will be repeating a lot of what I said in my review of Grand Theft Auto 4 and The Lost and the Damned, The Lost and Damned, since, yeah, a lot of the elements are the same. And where with Grand Theft Auto 4, I said that the multiplayer is almost, you know, might be worth buying the game for, and is really the only element that I can really say, you know, would be worth buying it for, particularly. <sighs> yeah, I'll get into whether or not that's the case later in this review. Now, the... It, it plays a lot like single player, just, you know, with... You know, you've got NPCs, you know, police, respray shops. Yeah, it's a lot like single player, just with some of the deeper features removed. And while, to an extent, that's true of recent multiplayer, this one is generally as chaotic, as open, and as crazy as the single player. And the, the multiplayer is also where the guns in this really work. 
because you'll you know you'll be blowing up and plowing down each other and cops and yeah it's yeah like I said very crazy and just out there and we actually have a server list it even has filters I cannot praise this enough in more recent multiplayer games far too often it's the game itself tries to match make and most games I've tried where there's a matchmaking service it's not all that good even when they clearly put a lot of effort into it yeah it it's just it's better to have that control in the players hands and at least offer both you know which this does now four different people can be in the same car if you know if it's a four seater and be shooting independently of one another and you know if you want to just enter a car you may have to hold down the enter key that that's certainly true in single player if you want to you know whether it it makes the difference of whether you want to just use a cab or take a cab you know as in steal it and in, in multiplayer I'm not sure it's entirely necessary to hold it down it's certainly not if you aren't on opposing sides or the like now if in multiplayer you don't move slowly like you do in single player you can customize the look of your player model you know there's a male there's a female and there there is as much as four options per body part and it really is you know legs upper body hat yeah there is so there are a few different you know configurations and unlike Max Payne 3 this doesn't have separate groups and thus you know or also has less distinct personality to them and in this you also cannot play as single player characters the multiplayer is basically your classic first person or third person shooter multiplayer you don't choose loadouts rather you pick up guns in the level and in this they are very clearly marked both you know on the minimap and just yeah you you know they're floating in the air very you know multiplayer where in single player that is not the case and yeah this is one of the elements where this is one of the rare elements in this where it's very clearly multiplayer a, a video game rather in single player the dropped guns will glow orange so yeah gun pickups very video game like where the rest of it feels very real and that that one element doesn't really pull you out of it so yeah you all start with set weapons and it'll usually be a pistol and or a submachine gun and or a melee weapon now today servers are somewhat rare the there were three times where we were you know respectively seven eight and ten players total the rest of the time Sometimes you find no one to play with, and other times, well, yeah, there'll be a few. Now, it, you can, you know, start your own free mode server, and someone might just come along and join. Now, where the... There were 12 settings, I believe, for free mode in The Lost and Damned, and in this, we're down to six. And the 
in in this they're basically full islands where there were some you know smaller areas in in some of the yeah some of the levels in Lost and Damned and the, the there are 11 deathmatch game levels and 15 race levels and the and and they also do include the the whole city the you know not race but yeah and yeah you know in the, the you know they might include like the docks or the prison and such and surprisingly there are a few ranked servers today which I'm still not sure that I ever saw any indication that I was rising in rank or that others had or were rising in rank but I guess I think that's the idea and the, those are the two server types ranked and player and player is just entirely free there is no yeah and yeah in Lost and Damned there were hardly any ranked servers same for the four but yeah in this not quite as many, but maybe two-thirds as many as player servers, or half. Now, in multiplayer, you're going to have a lot of fun with, you know, rocket launchers. You can be firing with rocket launchers, someone driving a vehicle at you, you know, firing their gun from there, and, you know, yeah, you can be on either side of that, and it's really tense and a lot of fun and you can play chicken in in general you know whether yeah re regardless of the vehicle either of you are in regardless of whether or not maybe one of you isn't in a vehicle at all and yeah a lot of fun to be had there and yeah the the multiplayer you know it's basically first person or third person shooter deathmatch and such with land vehicles, boats, and helicopters, and an open world, and yeah, all of this is really, yeah, really awesome elements to have in, yeah, in this kind of multiplayer experience. The respawning, you often respawn very close to where you died so and this can lead to really long firefights because you dying does not mean that the firefight has to end you come right back and can start firing on the other guy again and yeah when there are more you know if there's like five people involved in the shootout yeah it's 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 a ton of fun just shooting the others, coming back to life, shooting the others again, yeah. And there there are still a few hackers, but in this I never found them to be abusive, where, you know, in the first DLC and in Grand Theft Auto 4, they might, like, throw, you know, a bunch of obstacles in your path, really block you in, or they might you know, drop you from a very high altitude, basically, yeah, making it really difficult for you to play normally. In this, I never experienced that, and yeah, the, the hackers just played around with the, like, you know, I was in a car with a hacker at one point, and he made the car go flying a few times, and that, you know, yeah, that was fun the 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 multiplayer levels can be pretty big chunks of the city and the the multiplayer is one of the only ways that this really challenges the player I, this is the easiest of the three Grand Theft Auto 4 you know products it's it's hardly ever challenging. Now, 
you can go almost all the places that you can in single player just you know basically everywhere that's outside and even some you know places inside you can go inside a burger joint and start you know you you can do do you know pull a pulp fiction opening on that yeah now it it can be a bit difficult to see the other players if you're being chased by the cops you know on on the mini map because the the police you know will start these blinking this zone that they look for you in and that'll blink blue and red and yeah if the other players are within that they're colored you know yeah their colored indicator on the minimap will be harder to see and this again this didn't have to be that way it could have they could have given them more distinct like maybe make them stars also the the individual cops each have their own blinking blue and red you know person indicator so yeah if if all players were marked with stars and the you know the blinking blue and red was toned down maybe just kind of black and grayish it's not it's important that you can see where this area ends but it's not important that it's very like yeah very very easily obvious in in that as as long as you can basically tell from a quick glance yeah the something that's very fun in multiplayer is that more than one player can be chased by the police at the same time and at the same time it doesn't mean that if, if you're near the cops if you don't do anything illegal they're not gonna bother you at all you can be running in between cop cars and such they won't care at all even though they've got like you know trucks full of SWAT and attack helicopters going after some of the other players and at the same time if you do start breaking the law they will turn their attention towards you as well so yeah again you can have a lot of long firefights with the police with other players with the police around and yeah if even if you die from the police you may respawn very close to them and can then start attacking them again so yeah and unlike Max Payne 3 two players can kill each other without one of them having to blow the other one up I was never shot after having actually turned a corner and it's actually stable multiplayer <sighs> Yeah, when when I reviewed Grand Theft Auto 4, I said that this would probably be the last time I made negative comparisons to Max Payne 3 since I had just stopped playing it. Meanwhile, when I did the Lost and Damned review, I realized that there would again be some negative comparisons to Max Payne 3. This time, I think it's actually I'm I'm not sure I'm going to be playing anything else anytime soon that I would be comparing to Max Payne 3 aka Rockstar's failed attempt to do something that isn't open world now yeah in, in multiplayer the players get to set the rules they aren't just set before you start the match and the there isn't really any that that I could see any upgrading of anything or unlocking where you know yeah you're not unlocking other outfits or bigger and better weapons or anything the the multiplayer is very straightforward again very classic multiplayer with this kind of deathmatch or shooter kind of thing yeah there's 
there's there's nothing to earn, nothing to not much to customize, basically just the player model. And again, they don't just let you quit to multiplayer and you can't when you start up the game choose either single player or multiplayer you have to go all the way into single player then start up your phone select multiplayer and from there either you start up your own server or you look for other servers if you do one then you can't do the other without going back to single player and having to start it back up with the cell and that again <sighs> I've played tons of these games where there's a single player and a multiplayer and the two are distinct. We're not talking drop in and out. Plenty of them have had you either you're in a multiplayer menu or you're in a single player menu and several of them have had a open multiplayer option because yeah, why would you be I don't know, I guess some people are going to be switching back and forth between the two, but to me, either I want to play one or I want to play the other. You know, it's not, I don't find it particularly appealing to be playing a little bit of one, a little bit of the other. You know, when I when I sit down to play either single player or multiplayer, I want to be playing for a while. You know, it's also really frustrating to other players if you just play for a little bit and then quit. Now, in multiplayer, when you heal, you know, there, like like the gun pickups, there are also a number of armor and heal health pickups, and you can drive your car through a health pickup again with an armor pickup or a gun pickup, and the medkit will actually heal, fix the car itself, which is really cool. I actually at one point had had it turn out the fire that the you know the car had hit so many things it was on fire it might explode soon it healed it it stopped the fire granted i can't be sure if that may have been because the other you know the the player driving car i was pan i was the only passenger he i think he was a hacker so it's possible that that's why now Free mode basically doesn't have any specific goal, and you know you can set traffic, police, you know how many gun pickups there are, and and such. Then we got deathmatch and team deathmatch. Nothing to really say here. They, they run like you expect them to, and you've got race where you choose. You know the 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 host chooses between car, bike, or, you know, helicopter, and I believe everybody then uses that same game, where, you know, Lost and Damned had chopper versus chopper, where one was in a helicopter and the other was in, on a motorcycle, and it's checkpoint racing, and you can respawn at will at the most recent checkpoint, and then there's also GTA races where you pick up guns along the way and attack. Unfortunately, these are also the only modes. Gone is Mafia, where you're driving around the city and basically doing objectives. It's a lot like single player in that way. And there are different, you know, different players, different possibly different teams, depending on which version of Mafia you choose. And yeah, you'll be competing with others you know, carjack city where it's, yeah, trying to steal cars and get them to, you know, the set point and, you know, if someone else has stolen the car, it might be useful to shoot the car to damage it because then they'll get less money and, you know, mode cops and crooks where players, yeah, the two teams, you're either the cop trying to protect these witnesses or you're one of the crooks trying to yeah kill the witnesses and also the cops you know turf war which felt a lot like San Andreas's you know what was it, turf war game or something like that 
you know, Grand Theft Auto 4 had three co-op missions. You know, I've already mentioned Chopper versus Chopper. Lost and Damned also had Lone Wolf, where it's basically this one player who can earn points. Everybody else has to kill him. The person who kills him becomes the Lone Wolf. Yeah, that kind of mode. Yeah, all of those gone. And I, I don't really see why that was at all necessary. This doesn't really have big names for the characters. Instead, they're very distinctly defined. You don't come into it expecting, you know, a specific character from this actor. It's not, you know, typecasting or such. And all the casting is good, really good. The there are of course you know some characters and other elements of this are you know offensive stereotyping stereotypes you know there are among the characters is Evan who is basically Tony's boyfriend and he has been yeah he's been giving him a lot of drugs. And the the introduction to Evan is Tony, rather Lewis, walks into Tony's place, and you know, it's the first time we see him. Tony already knew him, and he's dancing and singing along to Man Eater, and just he's like dancing from side to side. He doesn't want to let he's not letting excuse me letting Lewis pass him. And eventually, Lewis just punches him in the face and then walks past. And, you know, Lewis's mother is really hard on him. And you have this, you know, strong, passionate, and complicated relationship between, you know, family members in the Latino community. And Lewis argues a lot with his two friends who have remained in the lower class where they all grew up where Lewis because of gay Tony has moved up you know to the east side and you know there are a lot of gay jokes you you work for Yusuf a very powerful Arab who is really into hip-hop culture and drops the n-word all the time and yeah, he's he's a ton of fun, and another character remarks about him that he wants what he can't buy, and yeah, he likes to send you out stealing military vehicles and other unusual vehicles, and then shooting your way back out. This sends easily, you know, just just talking missions easily a dozen, maybe two helicopters your way, and yeah, the game has equipped you to destroy them. You, you know, we again have Brucey who's always, you know, jumping around doing martial arts into the air and, you know, bragging, and in this we meet his older brother, who is clearly where a lot of Brucey's <laughs> overcompensating and insecurities stem from and you know the the Russian mob are involved there are a number of minor characters that you can choose to meet and help and you know characters will talk about the current situation recent events and such AI whether friendly or otherwise could be better. This doesn't have a lot for you to do after you've completed the story mode. There are those who say that the controls in this are bad. I'd certainly say they aren't streamlined enough. Although we do finally have the option of accept and decline on shoot and aim respectively. This is only really true of single player mode, but that is where it's the very most important. And yeah.
in you know, overall there's still way too many keys for you to keep track of and you end up having to look at the keyboard trying to find the key that you're using and no you can't do that much by just reconfiguring keys because it insists that some of these keys have to if some of these functions have to have separate keys even when again you know if if the game just had like a switch function the way assassin's creed has you know if you're not holding down the right mouse key right mouse button then your actions will usually be socially acceptable you know it they won't draw attention to you meanwhile the moment you hold down r a lot of what you do is going to attract attention and yeah this could easily have a function like that this took me five minutes to install but i do already have rockstar social club and games for windows live installed and have not had an awful lot of problems with them although i think it was since the sixteenth sometimes it just refuses to log in to rockstar social club and yeah given that that is necessary to play multiplayer even though you'd, you'd think it was maybe just live but yeah yeah a, a bunch of the time it just will not log me in so. Some elements in this are as bad as they, the, you know, as the corresponding elements in Max Payne 3. There aren't really any that are worse, but yeah, definitely worse than other Grand Theft Auto games or, say, just Cause. This has ladders which you climb in much the way you'd expect to, and, you know, you can go faster by using the sprint key. Overall, this is fairly realistic. NPCs react to your acts of violence and, in general, you know, what you do around them. If you bump into them and such. This has a lot of content, but very little of it is interactive. When it's raining, you know, NPCs will you know, break out an umbrella or be wearing a raincoat. If you tap sprint, it will move you faster than if you just hold it. The satire in this is really clever and smart, thought provoking, and, you know, it targets everyone fairly equally and you know centers around drugs sex corruption and money and you know it's seen in ads shows signs logos slogans and such and you know yeah some of these parodies are really straight you know right on and you can really tell what they're parodying even down to like the person or the the show segment one of the ones I, I quite like and it's very and very very clear is this radio host who signs off Mike Whiteley weasel news yeah that's that's spot on and the you know this has less atmosphere and less overall quality than San Andreas also less replayability now this also has a smaller and fairly gray city than San Andreas and that is especially noticeable here you know that's true of all three Grand Theft Auto 4 product, but it's especially obvious here because it's supposed to be this 
glamorous, you know, yeah, glamorous, glitz, glitzy world, and, you know, sure, there are some places that have, you know, the, the nightclub area and such, still overall feels out of place, and it's not like Rockstar can't do this, because they got it perfectly right in Vice City, which did also have the benefit of not being set in New York, you know, set in, I believe, Miami, so, yeah, very clearly, yeah, place of passion and wealth and color, and, yeah, the, the grayer setting works for Grand Theft Auto 4 and The Lost and Damned, because those are more tragic stories, and they're set in environments that are very grim. Now... Yeah, overall, this is just not up to Grand Theft Auto standards. As the, you know, as every other Grand Theft Auto game, at least the ones I've played, this has a separate, distinct identity, and in this, yeah, it's this Latino lower class person who doesn't belong in the upper class and is cleaning up the mess that, you know, it's, it's this thing of beneath the veneer, yeah, the, the upper class has plenty of problems, plenty of ugliness, and yeah, it takes this guy from the lower class who's used to dealing with ugliness and problems, yeah, for him to be part of that, you know, yeah, be within that environment, not really belonging, it takes him to fix these issues, and yeah, and just as with The Lost and Damned, I didn't expect to really get into it, but I did, and that's really, I've gotten into the identity of, again, every single Grand Theft Auto game I've played. Now, the... Yeah, so the... Where the... This has a less fluid gameplay than earlier Grand Theft Autos. And while the graphics are better, the experience of playing it is not. Now you, I've already mentioned you have two, you know, fellow Latino friends, and you, yeah, you have them right from the start. It's not meeting new people and such, as in Grand Theft Auto 4. And when you go hanging out, they both come along. So, yeah, even that element is different from, yeah, from both of the other Grand Theft Auto 4 products, and they each have their own favor. One of them will drive up a car relatively close to you from which he'll sell you guns at a discount and the other will steal cars from you. So yeah, you know, there's no helicopter pickup, there's no calling in goons for backup, which you had in both of the previous ones, you know, unlike Lost it, lost and damned, you can't have someone place a gun in your safe house. Yeah, you're down to just two favors. Now, yeah, you don't have to earn them, and as far as I can tell, you can't lose them either, which, yeah, overall is still... It's, it's better than it was in 4, where you constantly had to deal with these friends and it comes with a cooldown time and it is a really good addition now unlike Grand Theft Auto 4 this 
combines the car wash and the pan spray, you know, like it also was in previous games, which makes more sense because when do you ever use the car wash? I think in Red Theft Auto 4, I was asked to in one mission, like a tutorial, and that was it. There was no other, yeah, you know, the pan spray you use to escape from the cops. But why would you use a car wash? Yeah now you know it's it's just again it's something that you can do that doesn't change anything and that isn't that interactive now the story intersects with both Grand Theft Auto 4 and The Lost and Damned several times and unlike Lost and Damned where it was basically playing pretty much the same mission you might enter the area or leave and or leave the area by a different path, but you'd be playing the same mission, you'd be standing the same places and shooting the same enemies. In this, you're on the opposite side, so you're fighting the guys that were fighting alongside you in the others, and yeah, this is a really great way to do it, because yeah, like like I said, the the missing, you know, the, the stolen diamonds, keep showing up and in this you know we're in one of the first two you might have been selling the diamonds at this particular place and then the deal goes sour in this you might be buying you know Tony might be buying the diamonds and then yeah you know then it goes the deal goes sour, sour in one way or another and yeah the, they're very distinctly different, and that is very much appreciated. And it's also nice to see the other side of some of these conflicts. Now... The... You know, this is again set in New York with three main islands and it was built specifically anew for Grand Theft Auto 4. There are way too many missions and you know hanging out with friends and such where you're driving from the leftmost island to the eastmost island and you basically just have to make your way up to this bridge and across it and, so, and it's it's the same exact ride several times and it just it happens way too often. I can appreciate that maybe this is realistic, but yeah, it's just it's again frustrating and tedious. Now, this has a number of New York, you know, sky landmarks, skyline landmarks, and it's very authentic. And to prepare for a mission, you'll want to explore and memorize the area that it takes place in. You know, get, you know, make sure you have enough ammo. Make sure you have the right guns for it. Maybe, you know, yeah, make sure you have body armor. And there are, you know, the the different sections of the city can sometimes be fairly distinct, but they are basically all urban so yeah far too similar and just like in the lost and damned and unlike Grand Theft Auto 4 in this the entire city is open to you from the start it's not as you progress now sometimes there will be a ladder that takes you all the way up to the top of a building where the the previous Grand Theft Auto, before 4, yeah, they didn't have, but with 4 we get, you know, ragdoll physics, dynamic light, lighting, you know, water physics, object, object, yeah, object physics, and, you know, yeah, more NPC interactions. You can swim, but you can't swim underwater, and this also again means that you can enter the water in a car, 
and as long as you get back out within I don't know, five, ten seconds, you're not going to drown, where realistically, it's not that easy to just open the car after you entered the water. Yeah, and it's again, I would, I would still say that there's a way to do, you know, open world with water that doesn't kill you without it being way too easy to just, you know, that nothing ever happens to you in the water, you know, unless you really go out of your way to make sure it will go wrong. Yeah, I, I, I firmly believe that it can be done. Open world where the water doesn't automatically kill you and it still isn't just completely safe. Although I will admit I haven't seen it yet. It's the same thing in Assassin's Creed. Now, when... You know, you can go up and down exterior fire escapes and the the game isn't too reined in you know it's controlled by the laws both of physics and police but otherwise you can do pretty much what what you would think you could do in this kind of experience one minute of real time is equivalent to one hour of in-game time and it is a simulation rather than a preset you know series of events. If you die you will respawn at a hospital and lose 10% of your current money topped off at 10 grand and if you are caught by the cops you lose all weapons and ammo and respawn at the police station. Now if you did accomplish something, you know, a mission or, yeah, various other situations, it will autosave unless you turn that off. And, you know, if something happened after, you know, between it autosaving and you making it back to save properly, you can just load the autosave and, you know, that'll put you back at your house at the safe house and then you can save regularly so yeah you're not excuse me you're not necessarily losing anything by that but you know to be fair you can turn off the auto saving now you in, in addition to saving your game you can also store two vehicles or two cars anyway might be more if it's bikes at your safe house and you know basically and I, I say your safe house rather than one of your safe houses because yeah there's basically only the one in this at, at the very least lost and damned you eventually got one more but yeah and saving which also heals you is done by sleeping which you know forwards the in-game clock by six hours and if there were any cops looking for you before they will be gone I guess they just you know walk in and see you sleeping so soundly and say oh shucks that you know I'm sure it you know who hasn't bombed at least a couple ambulances in their time come on and the why do I get the distinct feeling that I was just placed on the list? Yeah, the... You know, you might have to travel to get certain guns, certain cars. You can vault. With... When you run in this, in single player, it feels like your character's 300 pounds. And at times, you'll even stick in the direction you're going. On, on the plus side with the physics, if you hit, 
if, if you hit someone hard with your car, it'll look like your character maybe got whiplash from it. You know, the, the head will bounce back and forth in, yeah, in proportion to, you know, how hard you hit and when you hit and how you hit and such. And if you, you know, and this will also happen with other drivers that, you know, you drive into and such. And if you do it fast enough, you know, either you or the other person might go flying through the windshield. And that's, yeah, quite cool. And, you know, it, when someone is hit by a car, if they're hit hard enough at least, if, if it was fast enough, they'll bounce off the hood. Now, where the engines have gotten, you know, are better, the gameplay isn't really. It's the same, a little better, or a little worse. You can hold on to, or hang on to ledges and shimmy, very Prince Persia-like, and really doesn't fit at all. When you go through doors, you kind of shove them, you know, very awkward and look and feel. The, this has realistic animations and more detail. And the animations are created on the fly rather than pre-scripted. The graphics are nice for the time, and I'd say they're better in this than in the previous two. The, the cutscenes are again quite good with angles and cuts, and you can usually skip them. You have a free 360 degree camera, which is quite good, but it does move annoyingly when not on foot. You know, when you drive, you have to manually adjust the view basically every time you make a turn or the like, or the camera will kind of sort of follow with the turn, but not really. So, yeah, if you're not manually turning, each time you turn, it will leave it at an awkward angle. Where, you know, at least in San Andreas, it was just about not touching the mouse because that would adjust it poorly. Here, you have to constantly adjust, which again is not necessary in single player. In, in single player, you can focus on just looking around and those and the like with the 360 degree camera, you know, get a good person, you know, get a good overview of the situation and yeah. And and some of these things, like with the sticking to the direction and slow movement, you get used to it and get to correcting for it, but it's really not, it shouldn't be that way at all in the game, and if I wasn't the type to make sure to play every game I own, I, I have a distinct desire to play through any game, that even if it was free, even if it's a game I don't like, I mean, I played all the way through the Godfather game, you know, yeah, just several absolutely horrible games, several of the Disney games, Hercules, anyway, yes, if I wasn't, then I probably would have stopped playing almost immediately, even four, and that's, you know, after 4, I wasn't necessarily looking forward to The Lost and Damned and Battle of Gay Tony, and I could really take it or leave it. I, yeah, I didn't need to play either of these two, but I got all three on sale, and it's like, yeah, I, I play through. So, if I didn't, I probably would have stopped as soon as I saw how slowly the character moves and how annoyingly the, the camera moves when not on foot. and. If this wasn't, you know, if, if when this came out it hadn't been the most recent outing in a beloved franchise, then I don't think it would have fared anywhere near as well as it did, critically. And it it's noteworthy that most of the critics gave it very high marks and positive reviews, 
whereas these real problems you find in user reviews. So, yeah, you know, because they don't have to... Yeah, they're, they're not so worried about, like, getting a bad reputation within their field or such. And, yeah, it's just... Yeah, these are not problems that should be found in a recent high, you know, yeah, you know, expert, otherwise expertly produced title that, you know, at full price and such. Now, where the you know, the map, again, has Zoom and Legend, and, you know, you can place a marker, and the mission objectives will be marked on the map, and these two markers can coexist peacefully, and, you know, and the GPS will show you the most direct path from where you are, right at, you know, right, you know, currently, and you can also have it say the directions unless you get really sick of that in just a few seconds and just look at it every so often to make sure you're going the correct path. Now, the, you know, and I... Yeah, and, you know, and, and at least once in free mode, I could see a marker played by someone else. And again, I was the passenger, and the other guy was the driver. He placed a marker, and then it showed up for me as well. So, yeah. This is very gray and blurry. Some have said it's a bad console port, and I can definitely imagine that. You know, it ran well on my, it runs well on my computer, which is new-ish, and runs without any problems Assassin's Creed 3 and Deus Ex Human Revolution. But to, yeah, to get it to run smoothly, I had to lower the graphics to the lowest. You know, I, at first I just had lag in multiplayer at the highest, but then it also started, you know, having problems in single player. This was a new engine built from scratch. It crashes for some. I haven't really experienced it much at all. The There's a cinematic camera which either you choose in choosing view mode or you hold down a key to activate it. And when you hold it down, if you're on a mission, it might focus in on the objective and, you know, in multiplayer it'll show the, the score and such. Now, when you drive really fast, there will be motion blur. And there's at least three closeness views, no matter what situation you're in. And, you know, third person perspective. You can always get, yeah, three different settings of closeness of a camera from behind. And in some vehicles, it might be even more. You know, you can get a first-person perspective from the very front of your vehicle. Now, teeth really stick out still. Now, the, there are a number of graphics, you know, glitches in graphics. You can watch TV. You can call anyone on your contact list and, you know, other numbers. And, you know, this is where you ask them to bring out the gun van, or, you know, you plan or cancel hanging out. And the, the cell phone is used well, and it's much less frustrating here than in Grand Theft Auto 4. You can easily and legally explore the city by taking a taxi, and, you know, the... Basically, when you are when you're in there you can look around with the camera and it'll be a first person perspective from the the seat you're in and you know you could 
you can hurry him along or trip skip, although that will cost some extra. Now, if you look behind you and then, you know, yeah, at any time you can look behind you and thus with ease aim behind you to, you know, in case you're, yeah, in case that's useful. And if you look behind you and then shoot, you'll perform an instant 180 turn. Now, when, you know, the various target indicators on the minimap, you know, they've changed slightly. Where before kill was red, it's now pink, and the blue for... Yeah, the, the blue is now lighter blue. And the... You know, that's for, like, transport or such. And the, you know, the, the weather includes rain, sunshine, fog. It can also be nighttime, and this will change as, you know, hours progress in the game. And, you know, you can turn on your high beams. When you're getting someone out of a car, if you have a gun out, especially if it's a one-handed, you'll, you know, threaten them out and you know you can also just pull them out like if you've killed the driver you'll shove his corpse out and such if you look up at something distant the focus will kind of pull back the sometimes I got long loading times with you know without it loading all the graphics properly and again a lot of the, the most frequent one it didn't happen all that often but when it happened when there were glitches the most frequent one was that I was floating you know just a few inches off the ground but noticeable a few I don't know, 20 30 centimeters now once you've loaded your progress, this pretty much doesn't have load times. It's only when it cuts in and out of cutscenes and, you know, when, when you change clothes at the safe house. And that has now been downgraded to only outfit where, you know, in Grand Theft Auto 4, there were much more detail. And you appear to start with all of them. And there's, I think, seven, and it's basically just two, which vary by color or whether or not they have sleeves, whether or not it's open or closed. But, yeah, when you go in and out of a building, you can, you know, yeah, it won't have to load, and you can very clearly see that you're inside or outside by the amount of light in the area. You know, the, the moment you go through it or out, it, you know the the there would be much more natural light from you know than than when you were inside. This is a reboot rather than a sequel, so no cameos, although some references. The military has been replaced by Homeland, and you know there can you know at three stars they will send out a helicopter that shoots at you. And the, you know, on even higher, they have this armored truck, which, yeah, comes fully equipped with a bunch of SWAT, or noose, as they're referred to here. And when you, you know, when you are wanted, there, you know, you have to hide, and there will be a, a cooldown period between when you're seen and when they stop looking. And there is a marked search area that you want to leave and this increases in size the more stars there are and such and if you move out of it but then some cops show up from the other side which they will you know they'll try to surround you yeah the moment you're seen the yeah the marked search area will move to where you were most recently seen now It, you know, it can be very easy to escape from them. 
now, and thus the, the you know where Grand Theft Auto is known for their hard-earned victory, you know where you really have to plan, really apply yourself during the mission, and you may still require some luck to win. Yeah, and this this just it just doesn't happen as often. If you break a fire hydrant, water will spray out. There is a you know sometimes a toll at the bridge, and you you know on some bridges rather, and you can either pay it, which means slowing down and you know forking over five bucks, or you can ram right through, which does mean police attention. And yeah, it's very much a matter of are you are you being chased? Are you chasing somewhere else? And yeah, is you know is police more police you know police ex you know attention or more police attention really what you want right now? And yeah, now you know f traveling on foot is not enjoyable or not flu and not fluid. You can use the police database if you're you know if you have a police car and you're parked and you can you know search for criminals by name or photo and you still have a camera on your phone you can also call for backup and on the cell phone you can call 911 and get you know police there EMTs which I believe can heal you I'm not sure I got around to trying that but I've read that that's a possibility and you know fire truck and such now if 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 you're going to play just one Grand Theft Auto game I would definitely go with San Andreas and most definitely I would not go with Grand Theft Auto 4, The Lost and Damned or this there are a number of awkward elements police bribes have been eliminated and the You know, you can you can be aiming at someone in your sights, and it'll give you a full readout. You know, health and armor, you know, separately, but you might still hit the wall that's you know that you're covering, you're in cover behind, which again is Max Payne three levels bad. Now there is less customization, much less customization than in San Andreas. It's a step backwards in mechanics, and we again don't have Turk War. These three Grand Theft Auto 4 titles remove a lot of beloved mechanics, and it's very much that Assassin's Creed 3 is the Grand Theft Auto 4 of sequels. Now. To stop a you know an AI driven car, you may have to get out your gun, threaten, maybe even shoot you know through the window. And you you know you can't use drugs in this, but you can get drunk. The the new features evolve from the engine rather than just being put in there. The mini games are somewhat awkward. You know, you have pool, darts, which are okay, air hockey, which is decent. You can't bowl anymore, even though the air hockey table is in the bowling alley. So that's, yeah, another awkward element there. You can, you know, when hanging out, you can go eating, drinking, go to a strip club, you know. You're cold sometimes, like in The Lost and Damned, but it's not at all like all the time like it is in 4. And it works somewhat like the dating also of San Andreas. You know, you call, you pick them up, you pick, you know, an activity 
rather, yeah, you pick an activity, then pick them up, and, you know, you choose the place for that activity. You know, not everyone likes to eat at the same places, for example, and, you know, they'll, if you do all that right, they'll like you more. But, yeah, these, a lot of these extra features and such are more life simulation than, you know, you, you don't really earn anything like you did in San Andreas, where exercising wasn't just for show, you actually got more muscle. And, you know, eating fatty could make you gain weight and such. Now, you still have to, you know, to engage the full map. Press escape, then press enter, and then, you know, maybe press a button again to just yeah, to just use it when really it, yeah, it shouldn't have to be that involved when all you're doing is checking the map, you know, and it, yeah, if you want to get legend on, you definitely have to, yeah, click those extra times. Now, and yeah, the, the thing is it just it completely brings the game to a halt, which really isn't necessary. You know, I, I realize it's not necessarily the safest thing to do to be reading a map while you're driving, but Grand Theft Auto isn't really a game where you have to play it safe all the time. Now, the there's also... Um, now a mini game of golf, which is okay. It's basically croquet. There's no putting, and you're just trying to get your ball as close to the target as possible. Yeah, and and dancing mini games, which can lead to sex and booty calls. You can manage security, which means you know standing in one of a couple of spots. You know, looking with a first-person camera for trouble and maybe throwing out someone if yeah if they're causing trouble it's it's pretty meh there's underground fighting where you can bet anywhere between zero and fourteen fifty bucks by fifty dollars increments and you can also fight in it but there are still so few moves and yeah it's it's neither that interesting to watch nor to actually you know, compete in, it's just, yeah, it's not that compelling of a, an element of Grand Theft Auto 4 to begin with. It's, yeah, it's something you, yeah, it's something you avoid if you can. And this, you know, just like in The Lost and the Damned, The Lost and Damned, you have the gang war. Oh wait, actually in this, it's the drug war, but it's, it's it's almost the exact same. Basically, you know, you're you get your two friends, you drive to a specific spot, and then you hijack a car, a vehicle that may be in motion, or you kill, you know, or you take the the cash from the drug deal, which you may have to kill the guy, you know, to get. And these gradually increasing challenge and yeah, for every ten you unlock a new gun at the safe house. But overall, there's no real end goal. Like, again, you know, San Andreas, the the turf wars. Yeah, you're actually grabbing turf or defending turf from a rival gang, and this just, yeah, you. All you're doing is, you know, going off tips on where the drug deal is taking place or where the drug ban will be and you go there and you steal it from them and that's it so you're not like establishing a presence you're not like taking them out and then going and dealing drugs yourself this is a, a safer way for you to you know deal with a drug yeah earn money from drugs you know instead of standing on the corner and having to deal with that yeah now the, the two friends will try to talk to Lewis, who, after a few lines, insists that they focus. And given that 
that they keep repeating the same several lines, either he's trying to distract from the player from that, or he's just as annoyed as we are. And it's not it's not necessary because as soon as he says focus, they stop talking. So why were they talking to begin with? Why couldn't it just be like, yeah, right from the start, you know, he wants to focus and then, you know, they just sit there in silence because that's how a lot of the drive takes place anyway. Now, when you know in in this you know there there's racing in each of these in this it's a triathlon you're using several vehicles like you might be parachuting onto a boat then you know you, then you sail a bit then you get into this car which has nitro which means once you get it into you know what what is it the the you know 80, 85 miles per hour whatever you know then it's it's ready to use nitro and then you use that and it gives you a real boost you know and i found that you can go you know when when i get into the car i might be like fourth place out of four once i start driving i can make it up to first place using the nitro and yeah this sports car so yeah, really cool. And the I suppose that might be about it for that. You can replay missions to increase your score, but only after you finish the entire game. So yeah, it's it's basically mission selector. Now, you can jump from, you know, yeah, you can jump from buildings or helicopters and, you know, the parachute will take you safely down and you'll get, like, a readout of stats and, yeah, again, something to compete over. I don't know why the game has you manually put it on because when you have it you usually have infinite so it might as well just put it back on like yeah you know it's you basically have to select it between the weapons and press fire and then he'll put it on yeah it it might as well just be like you don't have to manually It's it's like you know when you when you pick up a weapon if it's or or ammo you just walk onto it it doesn't ask you to press another button to do it so why the parachute I mean it's it's not like you you're not forced to use the parachute from jumping out if if you just want to jump out and not use it you just don't press the button to activate it but yeah and and again you have you know detailed controls for that which again unlike just cause now the um, among the new npcs are really overweight people including bikers i don't know why these really overweight bikers weren't in the lost and damned because i'm almost certain they aren't now Overall, this does not bring, you know, keep the new content that Lost and Damned has, which is fine. You know, it's it's fair enough that, you know, you have to buy them both if you want all the contact on the content that is between them. Now, you can hang on to, you know, cars, although you'll usually fall off after a little bit and flying is still bad the you know it's it does it controls a lot like in San Andreas and the same as in Grand Theft Auto 4 I think it's been a little while since I played that one 
so so you know if you remember it from that then yeah you don't have to learn it anew but in this like in 4 you have to fly to win and it's about a fifth of the missions in this that require you to fly which given that it's not that long is ridiculous well really it would be pretty ridiculous regardless of length but yeah it's again it's more involved than driving and while I realize that flying a helicopter is more complex than driving a car driving a car in this you know really isn't complex at all there's no gear shifting you don't have to worry about you know it acceleration and backing up and turning and all that is very straightforward in this where in reality in cars it is a little more there's a little more to it and given that the flying should also be you know simple like that because this isn't a flight simulator you know if yeah and and also there are games where you know if you want to drive a car very detailed you know you might play a racing game one that's specifically for cars but Grand Theft Auto by their very nature is you know just has all these elements and doesn't force you to yeah to, to learn an insane amount of stuff in order to you know you can say the same for firing guns isn't that complex in this where yeah in reality you know you have to deal with a bunch of stuff for that so yeah basically flying and, and somewhat parachuting are the only elements in this where you really have to understand the controls very delicately and practice a lot and yeah you know grant just cause gets this perfectly right you know there's you know the, the where Grand Theft Auto definitely has elements that make it overall better you know there is more personality the characters and plot are much more interesting and much more well-defined less cliche and you know this you know the the three Grand Theft Auto 4 titles have multiplayer although then you get into Just Cause 2 also has multiplayer and though that came out I think three years after these two DLCs the multiplayer there is so much better than in Grand Theft Auto so much more open and much crazier with way more military vehicles and such so yeah it on that in that regard you really can't compete with that and yeah the moment you're talking parachuting you know flying and such and the avail availability of these vehicles which again if you're gonna get into you know flying military helicopters and such a lot of times then you know it kind of does get more interesting if you at least at least in multiplayer get to use a ton of them now this doesn't have a tutorial for flying which is still better than having of you know forcing the player to under you know to go into a tutorial and you can always practice in free mode now the you know the military helicopters will come with miniguns one of them also comes with rockets and you know again there are always planes taking off at the airport you can't stop them or blow them up or anything I've really tried you know you can't stop them by blocking them with vehicles you can't blow them up no matter how many times you shoot no matter how much you know how many times you hit with explosive weapons now you can shoot from a vehicle while still driving very comfortably and the AI may also shoot either while you drive or while they drive and sometimes you'll really wish you could tell them not to you know the police might be after you and you're you're trying to lose them or sometimes you'll really want to tell them to start shooting now
you know, regardless, there should be a function. You should be able to toggle having them shoot or not. Now, the 360 degree camera moves completely smoothly, and you can, you know, you can pull a full 360 turn in a car whilst always aiming, you know, at the same, yeah, exactly at the same spot, and never actually lose, you know, never actually get, you know, have trouble still aiming at that exact spot. Now, you can fire an SMG, a pistol, you know, throwable weapon, and you can even cycle in the vehicle. There is some bad handling, you know, skidding, slow response times, and such. And it seems like the brakes are out on all vehicles because, you know, they'll run you over, even police will, and stop immediately after. And I actually realized it's true of your own car as well. You can't really brake. You, you have to slow down from a while. Yeah, you can use both the handbrake and the, the regular brake. It's not going to stop from that. So, yeah. And, the, yeah, the, the brakes being out on all vehicles, not only when they drive towards you, would explain something I've noticed in all three of these. When, you know, sometimes when you're driving through a tunnel or on a bridge, you'll see that a bunch of the, you know, NPC-driven cars have, you know, have clearly been hit from behind by other cars. And, you know, sometimes you can see this has happened a lot, sometimes only a little. And, yeah, when they're, you know, in a tunnel or going over a bridge, if one of them stops and doesn't stop soon enough, then the one behind them hits because, unlike the streets, they can't just drive around and, yeah. And, and it'll happen a lot along the same stretch in a tunnel or on a bridge, so, yeah. And the car may bounce or flip over at absolutely nothing. It has been said by Grand Theft Auto 4 that it's impossible and unrealistically impossible to drive in the rain. I have found that true of this and The Lost and Damned, but not GJ4. If you bail from a vehicle while in motion, you'll take fall damage. I once, you know, I, yeah, I experienced a car breaking down without catching on fire, without being about to explode, but just, yeah, you know, it'll break down, you can't get the engine running, the radio stops, yeah, and you can, you can try, you know, to, to, you know, keep turning that key, and, yeah. Now, also, now, if a car catches on fire, the NPC or police in there might also catch on fire, so, yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. Now, too often your character will enter the wrong car, and this, this even when you're facing and right up against the car you want to go into, he will turn around, go other to another car, and this costs you precious seconds. And you know he can also, you know, also some what walk slowly, turn slowly, you know, slow to respond. This brings in a number of new luxury cars and bikes and some attack helicopters and other helicopters. When you're flying, the map becomes an altimeter, altimeter, something like that. And the you know there's a two-seated APC with um, you know heavy-duty machine gun. You know it's. And that is a little over the top. You know, what kind of first world, you know, country's city has military vehicles? This is New York, not Ferguson. And, you know, you, if you take over a 
SWAT truck. You can sit in the back of it and shoot from there. And in a helicopter, if you want to shoot, you can hold down the brake key and it'll give you a first person shooter perspective with an aiming reticle. And the, the NPC, the APC, it's a little too difficult to shoot from it. You, you don't get a reticle and the, yeah, you, you, when you aim, it doesn't stop aiming when you, you know, if you keep aiming upwards, yeah, it'll just, you can keep pointing the camera upwards, but it'll eventually stop aiming. And it's like, why are, why let me do that if it's not to control the, you know, because when you look up, it also controls the, the cannon where it could easily just have either you look around you with a free camera or you're controlling the gun. And yeah, you know, again, in Vice City, they did it better. In the tank there, it was very easy to aim, but that was also before these got proper third person shooter mechanic, you know, where you could aim by yourself, which, you know, San Andreas introduced and then came back, albeit worse in Grand Theft Auto 4 and these. But yeah, you know, it, it seems like it should be able to because helicopter the, the helicopters are you get a reticle and you can see exactly what you're aiming at and no vision mode for the APC allows that but yeah it has two seats and from the second seat from as a passenger you can't shoot at all now with As a, if you have an NPC as a passenger, if you've stolen a car, when you've stolen a car, if there was a an NPC passenger and you got into the car and started driving fast enough, then he didn't have a chance to get out. They didn't have a chance to get out. And as long as you keep driving fast enough, he'll just sit. They'll just sit there and panic and like yell or just. It's a lot of fun, and as long as you don't slow down the car, the bomb will not go off, and he will not leave the the vehicle. And I like to try to do that, and then get to my destination. For example, the mission start point or such, without having slowed down so much that he can get out before I reach my destination. Now, in this, you'll sometimes see. It, you know, NPCs drive the the almost entirely broken down cars that usually you would just see stationary in the the dirtiest and poorest sections of the town. Now, this you know this puts a number of weapons in your hands. You know, we still have the Glock and Desert Eagle, and this one we also have a 44. You know, among the submachine guns, MP5, and this adds both a golden Uzi and a P90. We have a Atchison auto shotgun, which comes with explosive slugs, which I'll get into in a few minutes. And it does not have the sawn off, it can be fired from motorcycle shotgun that, you know, Lost and Damned had. As far as assault rifles, we still have the AK and M4, and this adds an M249 saw. A sniper, you know, we have DSR1, and one that also fire, you know, also one that fires explosive bullets, which launch the target into the air, and you know, can explode a vehicle with a few shots. It'll, it can take off a car door sometimes in a single shot. And yeah, very, very over the top, really ridiculous firepower. And among the throwables are still the grenade, which still doesn't feel like its shell was made of wet paper. And when you attack with it, you will actually throw it rather than sometimes rolling it, which the, the game decides and has terrible instincts at 
which of the two actions will do. You can also cook them. There are still Molotovs to throw. And in this, you get sticky bombs with, yeah, they'll, they'll, you know, stay on what you throw it on, such as a vehicle or the ground. And, you know, with, with all of these, if you don't aim, you'll just drop them at your feet. And you still also can't drop them out of the right window. I get only being able to throw them through the left window, because that's where you are, but at least you know, reaching out and dropping them from the right one. But but anyway, again, if, if there is a way to do it, I haven't found it, at least. And yeah, you can choose to detonate all of them by pressing a button. You know, you can shoot them to detonate them and pressure also, like if, if two cars hit each other and one of them has, you know, a, a sticky on it, and they, they hit by that side, then it will blow up. And sometimes they also appear to be timed. And, you know, still have the, you know, RPG. And also a grenade launcher, which, unlike the terrible one from The Lost and Damned, only shoots a short distance, doesn't bounce much at all, explodes quickly, sometimes even on contact, or even on contact, if, you know, when applicable. So it's actually useful, although it does still mean that the RPG is rarer in multiplayer. So that means there are you know, two guns per type of gun, and at least one new per type in this, you know, in the Battle of Gaitomi. It does feel kind of desperate trying to be as wild as Just Cause or Saints Row, and you know it's grenades and RPGs. You know, in in this city environment, have been part of this from you know pretty much the start, and you know some like yeah remote controlled cars with bombs on them and, and this kind of stuff but otherwise it doesn't get any crazier than that in these you know Grand Theft Auto games otherwise it's fairly realistic and that's kind of what we want from Grand Theft Auto again there are alternatives if that's yeah if we wanted something crazier then Just Cause is an option Saints Row I believe also from the start was more crazy than this and yeah, the giving you these military grade guns and vehicles just doesn't fit. They they do, like I said earlier, work better in multiplayer since yeah, that gets crazy anyway, although it's still there it also feels like it's less Grand Theft Auto and more just an open world in a city. But yeah, it's just you're you're too strong for you know the the regular police and such and hence like I mentioned earlier a dozen or two helicopters not at the same time but over the course of the missions and you can take them out because yeah with the shotgun if the helicopter's close enough easily take it out you know where again earlier we were talking get a military vehicle or use an RPG and be very sure that it'll hit you know, when when you aim, because you only have so many shots for it, that really made sense and worked. It's just, it doesn't really make sense that you're running around with all this stuff, and yeah, all they send is cops and Homeland Security, you know, if you're, there made better sense than some of the earlier ones where it was military they send in against, or I don't know, I guess it wouldn't necessarily be military on you know, American soil, but yeah, something more powerful than that, because yeah, they'll send a lot against you, and yeah, you take it out, you, you know, not only are you expected to, a lot of the time, you don't have to fight that hard to manage that. Now, this does still give you a proper third-person shooter, you know, those mechanics, you know, you can crouch, you can strafe, circle strafe, you have manual aim, you know, there's a health indicator and, you know, a cover mechanic. And the cover mechanic is still, 
yeah, really bad in that you hold down to shoot rather than pressing each time you press the trigger, which is awkward all by itself, but then it also messes up the timing because when you press, then he takes, you know, half second, full second to get out of cover and fire. And yeah, that means that the guy who just stuck his head out from cover that you were trying to shoot, he just stuck it back in in the time it took you to stick out and yeah and the yeah the, the character is just too heavy and slow for that you know for a cover mechanic to work like that and I don't know why they don't just have you stick out ready to fire when you hold down the you know the focus aim because they you know they clearly could do it because they do it properly when you're a passenger in a vehicle and you're trying to fire you know holding down you stick your hand out with the gun so yeah I don't know why they didn't at, at the very least for when you're you know driving the car you could do that it just yeah now if you're close enough to cover and you press the cover key you will roll to cover the same way you should have been able to in Max Payne 3 you know when you fight with melee you can dodge block disarm counter and he still fights like he has two inch arms now for melee other than you know just unarmed you can also get a knife a bat to heal you know you you sleep you eat use a med kit or call an EMT the fighting is monotonous. I again got ammo for guns really quick. I started out with a lot for just the pistol. So the next gun I got was the submachine gun. And yeah, I got tons of ammo for that really early on. Even really early on. Because a lot of the enemies just drop there. You know, yeah. And you just pick that up and easily quickly you know max out how much ammo you you carry making the shooting far too easy now and again there's relatively little recoil you knock down enemies by shooting them which makes it far too easy to finish them off because yeah they're lying down they can't shoot from there so you just keep shooting you know if, if there are a ton of them you might be expected to have to really cover and carefully choose no, no you can just fire across them. If you hit all of them, they'll be lying down and just finish them off one by one. You know, do do a quick, you know, yeah, F fire across them again if they get up before you're done and that's it. Now, and again, when you get close, you know, if you're too close to an enemy to shoot, You'll do an awkward pistol whip, which again just yeah. Now and in multiplayer, when you choose the rules, you can choose what's called episode guns. And that means that every gun you find will be from the Ballad of Gay Tony, specifically. So yeah, you can practice and try out these new guns. And that again, you know, for that it's especially explosive because so many of these guns cause, you know, again, grenade launcher, shotgun, sniper, and, you know, the, the machine gun doesn't cause explosions, but it's really, really powerful and, you know, has a ton of ammo and is very fast. Now, there's again the, the, the zoom when you, you know, focus aim. But here it automatically goes to max, except for the, the sniper. I believe that doesn't. That just goes to basic zoom. So if you want to dial down the, the zoom, you can do that manually. But yeah, it makes more sense for it to zoom as far as it can. And it does now. So, you know, props. And the... Comes back. Now, 
when after a while in actually I should start with when you you know for for the different missions there are different objectives and such and it uses the fact that there are a number of different things you can do fairly well you know you'll be told kill or transport or steal hunt you know maybe there's a time limit or other specific objective details and such and it does also somewhat use different settings and I will you know again kudos to the developers of these three because they do actually use different settings I mean some of them aren't the same settings especially the ones where it's you know the same situation for all three you know a mission that all three characters show up for or the like all three lead characters but other than that they go to other areas and, and and the city doesn't really change particularly between these games so it just it works for the environment you know and yeah the the missions here genuinely are fun memorable and varied and I'm really really glad to be able to say that about one of these three the the ones in four were generally fairly varied they they didn't they weren't that similar once you really look at it but they just feel too similar because the gameplay isn't varied enough now if you fail when you fail a mission either you have to drive to the start point as usual or you can use you know you always get a text message to retry and you'll be retrying from the last checkpoint and yeah this I, I really appreciate that also because you're not forced to start from the most recent checkpoint if you use the text you will but yeah you don't have to and that means that if you realize you made a mistake you entered the mission too soon you need more ammo armor maybe you know a, a different gun or something you can go do that and then drive back to where it starts but you do you have to use the text which means you can't do too much else before you go back to there if you want to start the most recent checkpoint so it's again it's about choosing and if you die or are caught during the mission you may just want to load your progress rather than yeah using the checkpoint one of the missions here is a golf cart car chase that's yeah that's that's fun and, and memorable again and again we have med kits and armor in the missions which makes it too easy and also kind of just doesn't feel realistic the, the great thing about the the guns and armor in single player is that they're usually where you'd expect them to be you know it doesn't feel forced you know if if you want armor you probably want to go to a gun store and just buy it so you know and the same for guns and ammo it's in multiplayer that the pickups are you know different places now you have to master several different abilities in order to do well at this you know including shooting driving flying base jumping and parachuting I will say again at first I really enjoyed it but then you realize you know it's it's okay and it's cool that you have the option and it's nice that both single player and multiplayer you can compete by you know yeah but overall it's just again they're they're just they don't even come close to just cause and that again they don't have to and they're not really supposed to but again it the moment you put something as big in there then you know those comparisons are going to be made now where the full Grand Theft Auto games tend to be around 33 36 hours long the Lost and Damned is only seven 
this is 12 so that's a pretty decent amount for DLC you know that's about a third of a full so yeah again kudos and in in to to review this the you know uh, you know the other games that I've been using for comparison in the franchise are Grand Theft Auto 3, San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto 4, you know, Lost and Damned, and you know, the first one in Vice City, although the first one it's been a decade, and Vice City has also been a number of years. I tend to only complete each of these once, and yeah, I got those back then, and the the other ones much more recently. Now, yeah, in a while into this, I start sleepwalking through the missions, and I, I easily defeat, you know, I easily beat them. Still, you know, I couldn't. That you know, I couldn't particularly tell that you know. And you can you can now skip your own songs on the radio if you choose to listen to it as a. Crap, I don't remember exactly, but yeah, you have to choose the right mode to be listening to that, and it is hosted. It's not just your own songs. And you know this uses licensed music, Latin, electro house, pop, disco, conservative talk radio, various forms of metal and hip hop, ASMR slash meditation. Although it also has this slowed down version of "Loving You" by I think Mini Riperton, and even before it was slowed down, that is less ASMR and more alarm clock. You know, it has various forms of rock, including indie rock, Eastern European, and Laszlo has his show, of course, and yeah, various like that. Where Grand Theft Auto 4 has 21 channels, this has 13. Same, and you know, not only the same number, but also the same stations as The Lost and Damned, which again really doesn't fit because there's a lot of heavy and in general rock music, hard rock and that really doesn't fit here. There is some club music but and, and some new ads and such but overall really doesn't fit. Now like in San Andreas the, the sounds you know, the sound files are separately, you know, organized and the order is randomized so that, you know, it, it won't play the, the songs in a, in a set order and, you know, the radio will also sometimes go to news reports about, you know, recent missions if they're especially, you know, over the top and such, which they often are in this, and the and and each station has at least some music I like. And if you're a passenger in you know in a car in multiplayer, you can also change the station. Now they seem to have finally fix the explosive barrels. They're very clearly like the red barrels. If you shoot them a little bit, they will blow up, and they'll actually blow up, they won't just shove the guy a little bit, they, they will kill him if he's relatively close to it. The, the last several missions of this overall are kind of meh, they're, they're really not the hardest ones and they're not that compelling in general, it, it doesn't feel like you're almost completing the game until the very last one, which has a quite cool climax, although it's Again, not very difficult. And like The Lost and Damned, it feels somewhat contrived. It doesn't feel earned the way, yeah, earlier Grand Theft Auto games, yeah, it really felt like, okay, this is really the end and I worked my way here, you know. And yeah, as with the 
as with the, the first two Grand Theft Auto 4 products, this is average, it's not as good as Grand Theft Auto usually is, and you know, every so often you'll get into the plot, the characters, the setting, and then that dies because of the tedious shooting and repetitive gameplay. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.